Praise the Lord. This is your brother in the Lord. What a wonderful day today by the wonderful counselor, the Prince of Peace, the mighty God. Amen. I want to give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for this wonderful weather. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Uh, I don't deserve God's mercy, all the wrong I did in my life, but I thank God for his mercy. I don't take his mercy for granted. God could have cut me off a long time ago, all the sins I have committed in my life. But I thank God that he forgave me for my sins and he could forgive you too. Praise the Lord if you're willing to repent. Praise God. You don't have to take no drug overdose. All you need is the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Getting the Holy Ghost is better than taking a drug overdose. Ah, God got something better than drugs. God got something better than alcohol and crack and cocaine. Uh, when you get in God's domain, he can set you free from crack and cocaine. Now you no longer have to be insane. Uh, somebody out there might have got molested. You might have been raped and sexually abused by your own father or by your own mother. A uh, pervert in your family who might have been an uncle or a stepfather. And this is why you don't like yourself. But I'm stopped by to tell you that Jesus loves you. And you may say, well, preacher Warren, if God loved me so much, then why did he not stop my father from abusing me? We don't always understand everything about God. But I do know that Jesus promised that he would never leave you. He'll never forsake you. God said, I will be with you always, even to the end of the world. Ah, there's times you get lonely along the way. There's times you get discouraged along the way. But here comes Jesus. Mm, hallelujah. God bless you, woman of God. You were too anointed to be disappointed. Woo, hallelujah. Thank God for the woman of God. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. Ah, bless every person. God, walk them down this sidewalk. God, you love the people. God, you can turn somebody's tears into joy. I hear the Lord said that weeping may endure for the night, but joy will come in the morning time. This is your time for joy. I know sometimes it get hard along the way because the devil fights. Uh, the enemy knows that his time is drawing near. He's fighting against the saints of God 24 hours a day, but let's fight back against the devil. Our uh, God have gave you weapons. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. He said the weapons of your warfare is not carnal. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus, Yahshua HaMessiah. But they might see through God until they're pulling down the strongholds and maybe depression that you're wrestling with. Pull it down the name of Jesus and said the joy of the Lord is my strength. Don't let the devil make you lose your joy. Don't go into no drugs or alcohol. Ah, praise the Lord. Let's talk about patience. My good brother on YouTube, he said, Preacher Warren, can you talk about patience? I want to know God's will for my life. Well, you could have a conversation with God today. And you could ask him and say, Lord, let your will be done in my life. Very, very simple to talk to God. And I guarantee you God will talk back to you. When you really mean business and you really love the Lord because a young man said to me, Dimatic young man, God is raising him up. I see greatness in you. Brother JD, uh, he was telling me on the YouTube channel, on the comments, the way he's at. There's not too many people he can talk to about the Lord. I've been there. Even people who I save, you can't always talk to them because everyone is not always spiritual minded like you, not to put them down. But if you want to know God's will for your life and if you want to know God's purpose for your life and you're waiting, just have a conversation with him and say, Lord, I surrender. Lord, let your will be done in my life. I don't want to be passing through this world and don't do your will. I'm a different kind of preacher. I don't preach for money. The love that God wants to give to you is for free. So this preacher, you don't got to hate. I ain't got no collection plates. The love that God wants to give to you. He already paid the price on the cross of Calvary. I just can't go through life and not encouraging somebody when I see somebody depressed. 
I'm a different kind of minister. I just can't go walking down the street and I see somebody on drugs and they are depressed and don't say an encouraging word. Your encouraging word can stop somebody from committing suicide. I'm a different kind of preacher. I don't preach for no money. Like these con artists on the word channel begging for money. I'm a different kind of preacher. I got to encourage the young people. I got to encourage somebody who I sense who been depressed, who been molested, who been abused, who want to give up. I'm stopped by the tiger. Let not your heart be troubled. I know it's hard. I know it get hard along the way. But he said, let not your heart be troubled. He said, believe in God. He said, believe also with me. In my father's house, he said, there are many mansions. When you believe in Jesus, Yahshua HaMashiach, you believe in God. When you get on God's side, God will get on your side. Whoa, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, when you're living a holy life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm a different kind of minister. I just can't walk by somebody and see somebody depressed and don't give that person a word of encouragement. Your encouraging word can stop somebody from committing suicide. Just say, Lord, let your will be done. If folk can sell drugs on the street corner, why not preach the gospel and tell the world to love one another? As Christ have loved you. I know it's kind of hard to world to love in the world like this because there's so much racism and so much hatred that's going on in the world. There's so much devil worship that's going on in the world. But Jesus said, I chose you to be the light of the world. Hallelujah. Just ask God. Let your will be done in my life. While you're waiting on the Lord, God will talk to you. He may talk to you in a dream. Our God may talk to you in a vision. When God shows you visions, your eyes is wide awake. Our God may talk to you in a dream. You're asleep, but have a listening ear. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says into the churches. While you're waiting on the Lord, they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. Ha. You shall mount up on wings. Woo. Like an eagle. Whoa, hallelujah. You shall run and not be weary. You shall walk and you shall not faint. Sometimes you get faint along the way. But God will renew your strength. How do you get your strength renewed? By getting in God's word. That's how you get refused. The word of God. Man shall not live ha, by bread alone, grrr, ha, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Have God's word in your heart. Romans, Romans chapter number five, go to verse number two, talks about patience. Patience, work is experience and experience hope while you're waiting on the Lord. Just ask God, what is your will for my life? What is your purpose for my life? And God will show you. Many times God may have to prepare you for certain things. God does preparation. Before Jesus Christ sent out his 12 disciples two by twos and chose them to be apostles, he had to prepare them. He had to discipline them. That's part of the word discipleship is discipline. You see it? Discipline. Discipleship. He had to teach them. He didn't just send them out any kind of way. He had to teach them. Praise God. It's a lot of things that we go through. God allow us to go through to teach us. Not just go through just to be going through, but he teaches us things. See, patience, workers, experience. In your experience, you learn things about God. There's certain things that God may teach you that you may not even learn in school. Some of the greatest men of God, some of the greatest women of God never even been to school. It's good to go to school because knowledge is power. But the Bible declares in Proverbs chapter number one, verse seven, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, is the beginning of wisdom. Oh, in order to get that knowledge of God, you must spend time with God. God was the one who gave King Solomon wisdom when he asked God for wisdom. And God was so impressed with King Solomon. Solomon was a son of David who built Solomon's temple. God was so impressed with Solomon because he... God came to Solomon and said, Solomon, ask me anything that you want from me. I'll give it to you. And King Solomon asked for wisdom. God was so impressed with Solomon that 
Solomon did not ask for riches, that God gave Solomon wisdom and riches, and he became the wisest king. So I asked God for wisdom, but along with that wisdom, I want to be humble. Because Jesus said that the meek shall inherit the earth because of those Solomon had wisdom. After a while, Solomon began to worship idols. The Bible declares in 1 Kings chapter number 11, verse 1, that the wise of Solomon turned his heart away from God. He began to worship statues and idols. He had 300 concubines and 700 wives. Altogether, that's a thousand witches. Worshiping idols. Idol, his women, wives, was worshiping idols. So I know Solomon had wisdom. But he turned his heart away from God. Honey, I want to stay with God. I want to stay humble when God raised me up. I don't want to get prideful and arrogant like Lucifer who became puffed up. Stay humble and then God will, will continue to bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now you can say, look what the Lord has brought you from. A lot of folk became prideful and arrogant because of the wisdom that God has gave them. You got to stay humble with that wisdom. Always acknowledge God and say to God, be all the glory for the things that he has done. Hallelujah. To God be all the glory. I don't want no glory. All the glory goes to God, not me. I'm nothing without God. God wants us to stay humble. Too many preachers have became puffed up and became prideful and became arrogant. So God had to bring them back down. So God wants to build up character in us. Discipline and character while we're waiting on the Lord. So God allow us to go through experiences to crucify the flesh so we can decrease so the Holy Ghost can increase. Oh, I like that in our lives. So that when God begin to do miracles in our ministry, that we stay humble and keep on preaching repentance and keep on preaching holiness. Now, let me tell you something about ministry. Everyone who say they call in ministry does not mean you're called to preach. There's different kinds of ministries. Ministries of help. Read the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 12 if you get a chance to. It talks about the gifts of the Spirit. Also, the Bible talks about the ministry of help. Uh, there's different kind of ministry. You may have a youth ministry. You may have a singing ministry. Our music ministry. Our, our ministry of being an usher. There's different kind of ministries. When you say that God called you in the ministry, everybody's not called to preach the word. There's different kind of ministries. A lot of people who say they called to preach did not mean that God had called them. Many have called themselves. Many of them went, but they was not sent. The Bible said, how can they hear without a preacher? How can he preach except he's been sent? You got to be sent by God. Just don't go on your own. Or you may mess up. A lot of folk want to preach because they want money. They want to preach because they want to get popular. They want to preach because they're prideful and they want the glory to themselves and don't want to give God the glory. God said, I will not give my glory to another. God ain't sharing his glory with nobody. Many folk want to do miracles like Jesus because they want the glory. They have no intentions of giving God the glory. They want the power of Jesus, but don't want the character of Jesus. That's deep. Folk don't want to be humble like Jesus. They don't want to love like Jesus. They don't want to uh, be holy like Jesus. They just want to walk on water and, and, and do miracles because they want the glory. They got the wrong intentions. Those are the ones God going to say, I never knew you. They part for me. He workers of iniquity. According to Matthews chapter number 7 verse 22. There are people who want the power of Jesus, but don't want the character of Jesus. They don't want to have the fruits of the spirit. And Jesus said, I didn't come to be served. I came to serve. He came as a servant. You got to stay humble. Too many folk became puffed up. I got to stay humble before God when God began to use me. Lord, help me to stay humble. Ah, I want to be like David. Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. Hallelujah. Because the devil is busy. He fights on your job. The devil fights in your home. The devil fights in your marriages. He even fights in your church, especially when you're on the right track. But I hear the Lord saying, keep your eyes on the prize. Oh, hallelujah. You came too far to turn back now. Sing that song. It was amazing grace. 
how sweet does sound. That saved a wretch like you and me. Once was lost, <laughs> but now we found you used to be blind, but now we see. Sometimes you must encourage yourself. Tell yourself I'm too blessed to be stressed and too anointed to be disappointed when you're going through your trials and tribulations. Everything that Jesus did when he walked on water, what that meant, that you could walk on your troubles because waters represents troubles, trials and tribulations. Look what the Bible declares in Isaiah chapter 43, verse number two. You see, when you pass through the waters, it will not overflow you. When you pass through the rivers, it will not overflow you. When you pass through the fire, it's not going to burn you. Because if God be for you, if God be for you, he's more than a whole world against you. You get on God's side, God will get on your side. He's a lawyer in a courtroom. Whoa, hallelujah. He's a doctor in a sick room. I'm a living witness. I pose to have been dead when I was eight years old. The doctor said I pose to have been dead on the operation table up in Harlem Hospital. I was born in Harlem. Started preaching the gospel as a child. The devil tried to kill me, but Jesus healed my body. That's how I know he's a healer, because I had experience. That's why it's in the book of Romans, chapter number five, verse two. Patience, workers, experience, and experience, hope. You don't need no dope. God is a great hope. I'm not talking about the Pope. Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So why are you waiting on God for God's purpose to be in your life? Just say, Lord, have your way. Let your will be done, Jesus. I'm the part of God and you are the clay. Now it comes with obedience because obedience is better than sacrifice. That's deep. Because many of you are sacrificing your time to be in church. All that is good by you being obedient. Mm, a lot of folk are not being obedient. God may have told you to pass out a track to somebody, but you somewhere watching movies. God may have told you to witness to somebody about Jesus, but you somewhere gossiping on the phone, on the Facebook, and God wants you to witness to somebody about Jesus. See, see, sacrifice is good. When you sacrifice your time for God, after you sacrifice your time in prayer, now God wants you to be obedient. Sacrifice and obedience go together. That's deep. Cain and Abel gave sacrifice to God, who was the sons of Adam and Eve. But God did not accept Cain's sacrifice because his heart was not right with God. He didn't have an obedient spirit to be pure and live holy towards God. But God accepted Abel's sacrifice because his heart was pure. That's why Jesus said, bless are the pure in heart for they shall see God. So when you have a pure heart, your heart becomes obedient towards God. Not just sacrificing to God, after you sacrifice to God, be obedient to God. Because obedience is better than sacrifice. Because it's your, because see, it's your obedience to God that brings the blessings. Look what the Bible declares in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. Before we pray, we got to be humble because everybody's prayers, God doesn't always answer because God does not respond to a bad attitude. God wants us to be humble, not arrogant, not dignified. I'm not better than nobody. We got to stay humble because the Bible said that God resists the proud and give us grace unto the humble. That's why Jesus said, and the meek shall inherit the earth. So God responds to a humble spirit. He said, humble yourself and pray. Pray and obey, not just pray. A lot of folk pray, but don't want to obey the same God who they pray to. And that's why God don't answer prayer. Folks still doing witchcraft, still doing devil worship, still cheating on their wife, still cheating on their husbands, still child molesters, but yet they sacrifice their time in church, but don't want to obey God's word. You see, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's how you can tell someone who loves Jesus, where well, you obey Jesus and obey his holy word. He said, abide in my words and let my words abide in you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Ha! I feel Jesus. Seek my face. Turn from your wicked ways. Stop the racism. God don't hate black skin. God hates a black heart. Don't let love depart. Just like God don't hate whites, God hates spite. 
God don't hate Indian, so give God thanksgiving. God don't hate Chinese, uh, Japanese. He don't hate Asian. God's grace is amazing, but he hate our wicked ways. He hate the racism. God hates the killing. He hates the evil. And that's why God sends destruction like he did in the days of Noah, because the world was wicked. Only Noah and his family were saved. When he told Noah to build an ark. Turn from your wicked ways. Then God said, I will come and hear from heaven. I will forgive your sins and I will heal the land. Now God can heal the land. You don't got to get no Omicron when you repent from doing wrong. God is the highest and he can heal you from coronavirus. But the worst plague is sin. The Bible declares in Isaiah chapter 59 that your sins has separated, came between you and God. And, it, and your iniquities have caused him to hide his face. Lord, forgive me for my sins. Not just only ask God forgiveness, I must repent. There's a lot of folk who ask God forgiveness but won't repent. They keep going back doing the same sin. Forgiveness and repentance work together because repent means to stop, turn away from sin. For example, if you still cheat on your husband and you tell your husband, I'm sorry for cheating on you, but you're still flirting around with his brother, then that's not repentance. If you say you're sorry for what you did, don't do it no more. That's repentance. If you're still cheating on your wife and flirting around with your wife's sister and want all this open marriage mess, that's not repentance. When you truly sorry for what you do, you don't do it no more. No open marriages. God is against open marriages. It's adultery. Honey, I ain't sharing my wife with nobody. The Bible said I have one wife and one husband. No sweethearts on the side. We living in days that folk got sweethearts on the side. Marriage is about being faithful. If you're not going to be faithful, don't get married. When you love God and put God first, then God will bless you. No, we're not perfect. Yes, we make mistakes, but when you fall, get back up. That concludes me too. I got to live what I preach. Preach to reach each, not just preach. Spell the word preach. Preach means to preach to reach each. Take the PR, preach what you got, reach. Take the R of reach what you got, each. That means preach means preach to reach each. I must live what I preach, not just preach. Oh, hallelujah. So while we're waiting on the Lord in patience, have the intentions of obeying God. So when God said, I want you to go do this and do that, say, Lord, I will go. Because a lot of people, God is calling, but they're not being obedient to the call. That's why the Bible said many are called, but few are chosen. See, the, those who are chosen are the ones who was obedient. Oh, hallelujah. Obedient. A lot of people God is calling, but they're not listening. They shut their ears to God. They won't take heed. So they were just called, but not chosen. All to be chosen, you must be obedient to the call. Answer to the call. You may run, but you can't hide. You may hide, but you can't get away. Jonah found that out the hard way. Me too, because I didn't want to preach. I started preaching the gospel when I was six years old. But I left because I got discouraged. And my plan was to go into playing bass guitar. I played bass guitar. My record is coming out too. The devil tried to get me to sign a contract. I uh, the bass player who played with Jay-Z. He learned from me how to play the bass. Well, he watched me playing the bass up in Harlem and New York City, where I was born at. Thank God for that young man. We pray that God will continue to save him and raise him up. I see greatness in him. But I was asked to sign a contract to play in the hip-hop world and sign a contract with the devil. I said, no, I'm not playing the bass guitar for the devil. Because Jesus said, what profits a man if he'll gain the whole world and lose his soul? Ain't not wrong being rich. But don't get rich the devil's way. Those in Hollywood have sold their soul to the devil for fame and fortune. But when that kind track is up, the devil will come to collect and take their soul to hell. Honey, I ain't going to hell for no money. Because money cannot buy my soul out of hell. I'd rather have Jesus in silver and gold. Ain't nothing wrong being rich. God was the one who made Solomon rich. But don't put riches above God. Don't worship money. Put God above money and not money above God. The Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. It did not say that money is evil. 
It said the love of money is the root of all evil. It didn't say money is evil. Don't worship money. There's a lot of preachers who are worshiping money. There are a lot of pastors who are worshiping money. That's why they don't preach the truth, because they're afraid that folk are going to stop giving money. So they don't preach holiness no more. Are you willing to answer to the call when God say, I have need of you. Come. Do what I've called you to do. Obedience is better than sacrifice. So as you're waiting on God, stay in your word, stay in fasting and praying. Ask God, Lord, I want some prayer partners. He'll give you prayer partners. He'll give you people. It's hard to find real prayer partners today because there's so many jealous people in the church, praying church, going to church on Sunday and stabbing you in the back on Monday. Everybody who go to church don't mean they say. It's going to take God to give you real friends. It may not be a whole lot of friends, but at least you'll have that one friend who's a prayer partner where y'all can pray together and bear one another's burdens and encourage each other because you're trying to make it to heaven together. God bless you. I hope that, uh, I hope this word has answered your question and your statement to the best of my ability. God bless you. God bless you.